Argyle certainly looking impressive in these opening seven minutes. Burnley nil, Plymouth Argyle nil. Heath, Deary, fine first time ball to Francis. Chance to show his pace. The cross is deep to Ayres. Chance for Burnley, chance for Ayres. A superb goal by David Ayres as Peter Shilton went down. Almost saved it one-handed. But the force of the strike from David Ayres, good enough to put the Clarets one goal to the good. On eight minutes, it's Burnley one, Plymouth Argyle nil. As that long cross came in from John Francis, David Ayres, superb control. Adrian Burrows for Plymouth, chance for Plymouth. Oh, a superb strike by number eight, Steve Castle, has given Plymouth that equaliser. Ironic cheers from the Burnley supporters. First caution of the afternoon. I think it may have gone to number four, Adrian Burrows, as his kick is quickly taken by Burnley. Chances for Burnley, chance for Pender, I think it was. Oh, and Mark Morrison! who was stealing in as that header by John Pender came across the Plymouth penalty area. 9-5-7-3, Sony. As Shilton kicks long, Deary challenges. Chances for Burnley to make it 3-1 through Adrian Heath. Good skills by Inchi. Tries a shot. Oh, it must be a goal. celebrations as Burnley go 3-1 into the lead quite a little unfortunate a short seem to have took a deflection from Adrian Heath a fine one-handed save there by Peter Shilton unfortunately for Plymouth it came to Nathan Peel who had an empty net quite looking like six out of six quick look at his nose by, by Tony I think you'll find that your commentator, Mark Briggs, is right on the spot with 17 goals. Let's hope I don't have egg on my face as Plymouth come forward. Looking dangerous, chance for Plymouth. Oh, a superb strike by Martin Barlow as he came forward from centre field. Superb skills by Martin, B Martin Barlow evading one, two challenges by the Burnley defence as he slips that ball to the right of Martin Beresford. So, Burl, so Plymouth not out of it. Number seven, Martin Barlow making it. Burnley three, Plymouth Argyle two. down here at Turf Moor, it's Burnley 4, Plymouth Argyle 2, what can Russell do, he plays the ball back to David Ayres, as he whips that first time ball in, oh I thought, to make it 5-2 as Peel stole in, on the edge of that goal area, Keith Hackett puts the whistle to his mouth, full time down here at Burnley, a fine entertaining match, down here at Turf Moor. Someone who used to stand on the long side, it must have been a dream move for yourself. Uh, yeah, it certainly was. Uh, I used to come on with my dad and uh, it's great for me to come back to my hometown club. Uh, things weren't going so well at Sheffield and uh, so it's great to get a chance here at Burnley. I believe your Turf Moor hero was Billy Hamilton, the former Northern Ireland international. Um, do you look at him as being your role model or do you just try and concentrate on improving your own skills as an individual? Uh, well, I, yeah, I concentrate on uh, improving my own game, but uh, he was uh, a player I certainly looked to when I was younger and uh, he was my idol when I used to come on the terraces here. 
you said that you just wanted the chance to prove you can score goals here at Burnley. So at the moment, is it a little frustrating to you to, for you to find yourself on the subs bench at times? Uh, I wouldn't say that, no. Uh, I think the front two, Adrian Heath and Kevin Russell, uh, two very good players and uh, you know I've just got to keep playing well when I come on and uh, hopefully I can get my chance again you know from the starting lineup but uh, I'm not too disappointed about being on the bench because I'm still being involved and what hopes do you have for the rest of this season to establish yourself in the first team here at Burnley uh, score a few goals and help Burnley win promotion Steve Davis this season was uh, he had an uncertain start for you at the beginning with but now your contract's been renewed and that's coincided with some very consistent form from yourself. Yeah, that's right. Um, obviously, during the summer and at the start of the season, there was, there was uh, a fair bit of speculation in the papers. Um, but now everything's sorted out. I feel a lot more settled and, you know, and ready to do my stuff. And in the second division, who do you, would you say is giving you the most trouble of the opposition's uh, forward lines up to date? Um, I think obviously Kevin Man uh, Francis springs to mind, obviously because of his. Uh, the size of him, um, but also 